Welcome to the Nutrigenomic Nation podcast with Brian Highfield, certified nutritionist, author, speaker, and founder of multiple successful companies in the health world. Brian is known for educating healthcare professionals and others on improving their health and their life through breakthroughs in nutrition, technology, and biochemistry. On the podcast, Brian interviews thought leaders in the world of nutrition and natural health. He and his guests share the secrets of a whole life natural approach to health and the life-altering results you can get by making easy changes to your diet and daily routine. All right, well, welcome to Nutrigenomic Nation, where we talk about nutritional-based healthcare technology and emerging trends related to your genetic health. And today, we have another very special guest. We have Dr. Daryl Misak. So Dr. Misak, he's a doctor of naturopathic medicine, and also, he is a licensed pharmacist. So welcome uh, to the show, Dr. Misak. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Enjoy these types of things. Awesome. Well, first question I have for everyone on our show is we want to know a little bit more about you and your background. Why did you choose healthcare as a career and why and how did you get started? Wow, deep. Okay, so my dad was a doctor and I and I got around with him when I was a kid. And I'm like, oh my God, they treat him like a god, you know? <laughs> so, so that was kind of a, a wrong incentive. But I was one of those people who all, the way things work in my mind is um, how does it work? And I would take things apart. I'd fix cards. I, um, you know, I, I'd fix things, you know? And then I got to, um, you know, well, as I grew up and I was in college, I'm like, what do I choose? And so I chose pharmacy and I'm like, okay. And I got into pharmacy school, but I loved anatomy, physiology, pharmacokinetics, biochemistry. And I'm like, okay. And I did really well because if you understand the basics of the body, when you understood a mechanism of a drug, hey, these tests are easy because this is what should happen based upon how it works. And then um, I got out, went to Duke Medical Center, was practicing on oncology and general medicine. And, um, but I saw that you weren't fixing people. And I questioned in oncology, particularly, why aren't we giving these people nutrients? If you look at biochemistry and what happens and they're like, oh, there's no research. I started pulling research before my five kids. I said, wait a minute, here's vitamin C drips and all these other things showing positive benefits and niacinamide or even niacin and these power, you know, all the, and you're like, well, that's been refuted, never found any refuted information, but I started learning more about Ralph Moss and Julian Whitaker and all these alternative practitioners who are looking at functional, how the body works from a natural perspective. And, and Julian Whitaker mentioned these things called naturopathic doctors that get, you know, that you learn medicine, but you treat naturally. Well, next thing you know, you know, it's a fast forward. I'm out in, Nor out in um, Portland, Oregon, studying at National College of Naturopathic Medicine, which is now National University of Natural Medicine, um, while in the meantime doing compounding pharmacy for five years out there um, of how to make hormones and all these other things and blending things together. And, um, and I ended up moving back to Pittsburgh, starting a practice um, later on. And it just kept, you know, you just keep going down a rabbit hole of how things work and uh, which led me to concepts of um, uh, bioelectric chemistry. And we can talk about that or wherever, you know? Yeah, yeah. We definitely want to talk about that a little bit. Um, first, you know, you talk a lot about uh, something, uh, uh, what you what you call an analytical approach to your health versus a diagnostic approach. I mean, why is the analytical approach more beneficial than a diagnostic approach? And well, what are they in the first place? Okay, well, a diagnosis, okay, you go to a doctor, and they diagnose you. And based upon their diagnosis, they want to treat that diagnosis based upon, we think this is what's going on. Well, it doesn't work. So you go to another doctor and he diagnoses it a little differently and comes about it a little way based upon usually the same information or trying to get a little bit more information to say, here's what I think is going on with you. Bottom line, it's a guess. They're guessing what's going on based upon the information that they can find. Analytics is cause and effect. I see this, that means this is happening. So therefore, if this is there, then this has to be going on in the body. So I use live blood. We look at blood cells and based upon particular patterns, if this is happening in your blood, then we know this is happening in the body, whether it be iron deficiency, um, specific B12, folate deficiencies, uh, glutination, suggesting that you're not digesting things and, and, uh, or breaking down to elimination, various uh, abnormalities in your white blood cells that suggest that you're 
uh, lymphocytes are being activated, that you're dealing with viruses or whatever, right? And mm -hmm. then we also look at urine and saliva for chemistry aspects of sugars, pH, conductivity, cell debris, and nitrates, how you're breaking down or building, you know, to build, breaking down proteins, whether they're being used to build in the body or whether you're not digesting proteins and you're getting excess of waste. And these, these, um, these variables tell me mineral deficiencies, where in the body things are happening, how efficient is the body being. And those variables say, if this one's out, you need more calcium, or this one's out, you're lacking potassium or magnesium, or this one's out, your B12 and folic acid deficiency or whatever. It guides me to say, hey, in order to co correct this variable where we have a definition of what perfect health is electrochemically in the body by looking at these variables. So what other form of health has a definition of perfect? Because you could ask 100 doctors to find perfect health and they give you 100 answers. Whereas I can mathematically say, look, perfect health means Here's where your energy efficiency is maximized based upon human biological potential determined as a mathematical equation by a genius named Kerry Reams years ago. And so Reams was curing everybody, but he was thrown in jail for doing so by, hmm. you know, fasting people and then teaching them what diet was appropriate based upon their chemistry. So I am one of these people, how do things work? And it, it dies down this rabbit hole that chemistry dictates cellular activity. So I've just moved up the ladder that says, hey, you improve chemistry efficiency, you're generating more energy than you're consuming, and therefore your body starts self-restoring. And where the variables are out of whack, cause and effect, tell me you need more of this or less of that. And it's kind of a, it's, it's turned into just a beautiful aspect. I've written a book. Um, it's in the final editing and stages so we can find a publisher who's going to put it out there for us. I've written articles to my health profession through uh, 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 international publication called Naturopathic Doctor News and Review, NDNR. And if you, I've got it all on a uh, website, docmesac.com. And I've got those articles posted that just say, hey, you know, is this a vital force, you know, that we talk about natural medicine? How about can you modulate the diet vital force to optimize it through diet and, you know, fasting diet or um, what you're drinking, what you're eating before you start? What do I take? You know, so it's kind of where I come about things. It's a lot so, of information in a short period of time, though. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, one of the things you were talking about there was was this energy. And, and you've talked about this concept of the bioelectric quantum energy and, and uh, of, the, of the body, and, and how, how does that work? Can you explain that for our listeners? What does that all mean? Okay, so Kerry Reams being a mathematical genius to define energetic perfection. He, he wrote out an equation mathematically that says, this is the line of least resistance in the human body when these variables are ideal. So anything away from that says that you, you have a, an energy loss somewhere, okay? And so what dictates that is, is, is mostly mineralization. He found that everything comes down to deficiency, where I explain you either have deficiency or you have excess. Excess means, hey, I've got some toxin that could be causing some symptom, but the body is this human incredible machine that if you have exposure to a toxin, there's, there's mechanisms to eliminate that toxin or to handle it. So Reem says the day that you consume more energy than you get from your food is the first day of disease. Well, I say, let's look at the whole picture. You know, let's look at pure air, pure food, pure water, electromagnetic fields. What are your burdens on your body that are requiring energy? Okay. And so when, when you take all of that into consideration, you have to generate more energy than what your body's consuming or you've exceeded your threshold. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, so what I what Reams told us is here's a basic equation with these variables that if you if you optimize these variables, then you will generate more energy. You build reserve energy, and all of a sudden you start to detox and your symptoms go away. So I put together what I call five phase optimal health. Phase one, clean up your environment. What are you putting on your skin? What are you bathing in? What are you breathing? What are you eating? What's the quality of your food? Yet alone is your food high bricks. High bricks gardening. If you people aren't don't know anything, look into it. High H I G H bricks B R I X. Remineralize foods because we're supposed to get our energy from the foods we eat, which is based upon minerals. And when you go back to ashes, you know, into this planet, 
what are they? 60% calcium, 24% phosphorus, 12% potassium, and 85 trace minerals. You're a ball of rock. So what we're doing is we're changing your soil to optimize its efficiency. Okay, and we're doing that with remineralization while using pure distilled water, which there's arguments there, to, because it electromagnetically will adapt to your energy frequency to flush out the waste. And so this, free, this, this equation tells me, hey, am I eating correctly? Am I drinking correctly? And then what minerals or vitamins I need to optimize this process? And that's where everything is energy. If you go back and you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you have to think in terms of frequency and vibration. That's Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. And then what is Einstein? These are the geniuses. Einstein says energy is the same thing as matter with the speed of light constant. Right? And people call that the God factor. Well, matter, that's us, our physical bodies, is basically energy. And Reem says, what is that energy? He, he reverse engineered that to say, okay, if you're taking apart an atom, how do I put it back together? Like what Reem's did. So Reem says that we are heat and electricity. So you have to generate heat and the breaking of molecules distribute, distributes electricity. And now, People think, well, wait a minute, you know, that's not taught in electrical science. Well, yeah, it is. What do you do? You do an EKG to study the heart. You do an EMG to study the muscle. You do an EM, EEG to study the brain. It's all electrical. And what governs it is sodium, potassium movement, and then calcium ions for calcium channels that open, and magnesium. You know, those are the four primary nutrients that channel how movement and energy is utilized in our body. And so we just, I just use an equation to figure out where are you deficient and how do I maximize to optimize your levels to see where the body is. And that's what I teach. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about, you know, something that everybody deals with and, and that's sooner or later is aging. <laughs> you know, no one likes to get old uh, except little kids. Little kids like to be older, but once you reach a certain age, you're like, gosh, you know, um, I, I don't want to be old anymore. I don't want to get any older. Uh, things start to break down. Uh, we get, we move slower. Um, you know, our, our cognitive abilities start to deplete. I mean, there's list goes on and on and on. And this is a gradual process. It sneaks up on you. You just kind of wake up, look in the mirror one day and you're gosh, oh my gosh, I got another wrinkle here. Um, you know, my knee started creaking, yep. you know, what's going on here. And, and so, uh, you know, you call that, uh, telomeres, one of the biggest breakthroughs in aging. Can you describe to our audience, what are telomeres and, and why, uh, is that a breakthrough and how's that related to aging? Okay, telomeres are the, they're, they're the rate limiting factor of cell division. They are at the end of your DNA, and, and as they shorten, bottom line, you age, period. And so in 2009, the Nobel Prize for Medicine was won by three physiologists, and they determined that there's an enzyme called telomerase, okay? And if that enzyme is in high amounts, it prevents the shortening of these telomeres. And so they took aged mice that were aged to be artificially aged to be about in their 90s what were blind had their brain they, they didn't they were senile they were arthritic they were white and then they stimulated this telomerase enzyme and they reverse aged them these mice their brains grew 25 percent their hair turned dark their um, ability to go through mazes their cataracts got better their kidney failure corrected their hair got dark and they became like 30 year old mice again, running through mazes, fully act active and like, oh my God, this is complete reverse engineering on aging. And so that caught my attention around 2014. And I'm like, wow, you know, why didn't I hear about this? So then I did Google searches and Medscape searches to say, okay, how do you stimulate telomerase? You know, what do they do? And so I pulled up about 200 abstract and looking at all this and started noticing all these natural substances that would stimulate telomerase activity. I'm like, wait a minute, these are natural herbs, you know? So, and then that came with my pharmacy background and compounding experience that I turned around and started formulating a product that ended up by 2018 becoming a thing called vitalometry. You know, and so basically tel telomeres is a short and we age, period. And stress, which does anybody have stress out there? You know, stress <laughs> causes it. So, yeah. if, you know, if you read Elizabeth Blackburn, she's one of the primary physiologists that won the Nobel Prize. She has a book out there about telomeres. And she tells you that if you have childhood traumatic experiences, that that experience in itself 
can cause long-term anxiety and long-term issues that shorten your telomeres and can cause you to not age, to age more quickly and die sooner. She has shown that just meditation and learning to relax can actually lengthen your telomeres. Yet alone, there's been all types. If you start looking at telomere activity, you'll see that certain vitamins and minerals and things like that and antioxidants can increase your telomeres as well. So when you go out in the market, you're going to find these telomere products are basically glorified antioxidants is what they are. But I'm that weird guy, you know, mm -hmm. I'm the one who looks at things from a different standpoint of bioelectric and those type of things. And from a naturopathic standpoint, looking at the eclectic use of how the body works. So when I formulated a product, I turned around, and said, OK, which herbs, what do they work and what do they do? So astragalus, astragalus is in there thousands of years of history for adrenal support, immune support, antioxidants, you know, all these aspects. But astragalus is one of the things that has shown, particularly having two extracts in it, cycloastragalinol and astragalus side four that are directly shown to stimulate telomerase activity. So I have all of those in this product. Purslane, why purslane? Purslane that weed that everybody pulls out of their garden but you should be throwing it in your salads because it is the richest source of omega-3 fatty acids. What do they do? Essential fats affect cell membranes. Every cell of your body has this fluidic fatty membrane, right? Mm -hmm. And so in order to make it allow things to transport in and out, you have to have healthy fats. Plus, you're feeding the brain with those omega-3s because the majority of the brain is fat. Okay, so i got purslane in there. Milk thistle. Well, what does that do? It's been shown to help liver. Why? Because the liver takes all the stress. The liver is what has to take whatever you put into it and say, can I use this or do I need to get rid of you? Are you a burden? Right? And so in milk thistle, all of the, every one of these herbs has been shown to have telomerase activity in some capacity. Um, ginkgo. Well, what does that do? Circulation, particularly to the brain. Why? Well, if mice increase their brain by 25% in that, in that same study in 2009, well, let me get make sure that we're getting blood flow to it and healthy blade and, and, and inhibit platelets so the blood can move through the body and not agglutinate. Because when I'm looking at chemistry, agglutination drives up conductivity, which causes cell destruction and causes nerve irritation. So, so I have ginkgo in there. Um, uh, elderberry, what does that do? Immune boosting, right? Plus resveratrol, again, powerful antioxidant. And, and again, has been shown, resveratrol is shown to have telomerase activity. Green tea, elagic acids, most powerful antioxidants known to mankind, anti-cancer, all those other benefits. Again, telomerase activity. One of my favorites is a, is a Chinese herb called Sinomorium. Sinomorium is a yang tonic for sexual vitality. And so it gives you that energy and sexual vitality aspect that get up and go without making you feel like you've been doing a lot of uh, uh, caffeine or something to that effect. And so, um, but again, Sinomorium has shown um, specifically to have the uh, uh, telomerase activity. Um, uh, what else did I put in there? Citrus, uh, lemon. Okay, so I put lemon in there, not specifically because of telomerase activity, but because of that bioelectric concept I teach. Mm. So you look at the benefits of lemon, with, you know, vitamin C and antioxidants, but it's also quite alkalizing, right? So lemons, hor alkalizing will, will, will improve. But uh, if you think of anionic and cationic ch chemistry, um, soap is an anionic surfactant. It, you know, you put that Dawn takes grease out of your way. One drop of Dawn, that grease mm -hmm. goes boom. Yeah. Grease is cationic. And so you use an anionic surfactant, soap, to disperse. Well, all food is cationic except lemons. So as far as my, if you look at the stuff that I teach, I have everybody doing lemon on a daily basis because it disperses, it alkalizes. There's a lot of benefits to it, but that's why it's in the product. And then I put calcium phosphate called Mencol in there. Why? Because you have to have phosphate groups in order to build healthy cells. And you have to have calcium to regulate all other minerals moving in and out of the cells. It's the gatekeeper of mineral utilization. So what I've done is taking these processes and I, I started putting them together from a compounding pharmacy standpoint, 
found out how to ratio of them out to make them fit in capsules, experimented with them, would take them myself. And I'd be like, oh my God, do I really feel like this? And then I started asking my clients, you want to try this? They're like, you want me to be uh, a guinea pig, Dr. Misa? I'm like, it's your choice. <laughs> yeah. you know? And they're like, sure. And everybody came back and said, can I have more? They loved it, you know? And so the testimony, so again, it came to be a product that we call Vitalometry, you know, V-I-T-E-L-O-M-E-T-R-Y. And, um, and it, it just turned out to be a wonderful product that we've just seen incredible testimonies with. I just tell people to go to Amazon and you can see the testimonies. Mm -hmm. But if you purchase, but because we do shows like this, if people go to our website, the Vitalometry, or you, which you can link through Doc Misak, and they use... Um, uh, what did we talk about? Nutra, um, a Nutrination. Nutrination. If they use Nutrination as a discount code, they can have 10% off for trying it. Awesome. So you're talking about a lot, I and mean, when you talk about these ingredients, you're talking about a lot of different plant extracts. Some of them have been well-known. They've been used for medicinal pur purposes for centuries, really. And now modern science is going back and looking at these things and finding out that they, they really are good for us. There's a reason they've been used for hundreds, if not a couple yeah. thousand years, right? Completely. I, I there, and there, that's the thing is when I formulated the product, I formulated it that you could take up to 12 of them a day and not exceed a maximum recommended dose of any one of the ingredients in it, mm -hmm. okay? However, we formulated it to give 120 capsules because I'm finding that four capsules a day, most people are like, oh my God, this is like life changing. You know, and some people within the first day of trying it, either taking all four of them in the morning or two in the morning and two in the afternoon. Um, I personally take four in the morning and I'll take three or four in the afternoon, particularly if I'm having a, a, a stressful day and take a few more. Um, I have taken up to 12 a day, but you just go. It's just like, yeah. okay, I don't need to go like this. You know, I, you know, four a day typically does wonders for me and most people. And rarely do I need that extra four. It's usually when I don't get enough sleep the night before and I'm feeling it. So, awesome. but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, these herbs have been used for, for years upon years. We've had wonderful testimonies with it. And yeah, I, it, it's, it turned out to be a great product. Great. So what's that website again? I mean, how can our audience uh, get in contact with you or uh, look up any of the information that you were sharing with us on the program? Well, Doc Misak, D-O-C-M-I-S-A-K, will send you to, um, or docmisak.com. And that tells you everything that I've been teaching, podcasts like this, articles, um, and also, there, but there are links to my office, which is Pittsburgh Alternative Health, or to Vitalometry. Um, if you go to vitalometry.com, V-I-T-E-L-O-M-E-T-R-Y, vitalometry.com, that takes you directly to a purchase page and stuff like that, where they can use the Nutrination uh, discount code. Awesome. Great. Well, we really appreciate you uh, participating in our program today, Dr. Misak, uh, from all of us at Nutrigen Nutrigenomic Nation. I hope everyone enjoyed our discussion today, and we hope you join us next time when we talk about another topic related to your good health. Thank you so much, Dr. Misak. Thank you. God bless. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.